Hi, super glad to have you back for our next section where we're going to finish out the Chat Now app. It's our big one and this is part two. We've got a lot of really good things to cover in this. So let's take a look at what we're going to talk about. We're going to start by looking at the scroll view component and also how to avoid the keyboard hiding our screen when we're in certain typing scenarios. We're also going to learn about thunks in Redux and how we can use them in our action creators to give us more options. We're going to implement some two-way API communication and we're also going to cover a little more advanced navigator functionality. We'll then spend two parts looking at the React Native Async Storage API, how we can use that to store data in our application for the long term, and then bring that storage and data back and rehydrate our Redux state, and also look at how to improve the user experience in our application. So without further ado, let's finish out this Chat Now app and get a ton of great functionality in. We're going to start this section by looking at the chat screen and showing you the code for it, and also going over some tips for how to work with a keyboard. This video is going to cover the code needed for the chat screen and the message bubbles as a quick overview. And then we're going to talk about how to avoid on-screen keyboards from obscuring our text boxes when we're typing in. We're also going to add in the reducers and the actions that we need to support the chat functionality, and we're going to wire that up. But first, let's get this last screen for our app built out. To implement this chat screen, we need two new components, a chat screen and a message bubble. Now we don't need to live code it together, but I do want to just walk you through it so you can see the code and so that you can understand what we're doing with it. Chat screen is the main screen component, and it's going to show all of our messages on the screen. So we import the message bubble component also, and inside of our actual chat screen stateless component, we create a set of just fake messages, and then we create a bubbles array from those messages. So we're going to grab this array of messages and for each one we're going to map it out and we're going to grab M represents the message and I represents the index. So this message bubble class, which I'll show you in just a second, gets generated based off these messages and inserted into the bubbles array. Here are the styles for the chat screen. And then finally we export it out. Our message bubble component is fairly simple. It's just a view with some conditional styling on it, depending on if it's our message or the support rep's message, and then the message that's being output. And finally, the styles for message bubble. To see these new components, let's add a route to get to this screen in our routes file, and then temporarily make the chat window the initial screen in our app. So we'll open up routes, we'll add chat, and then in our app, we'll just change the initial route to be chat instead of main. We'll also need to add a new case for our chat screen and import it. Now if we save, we can see in our emulator that we have a great chat screen going on there. Now if you play with this screen and start typing in your simulator, everything will be fine. But if you try this once on a device or where the keyboard actually pops up in an emulator, for example, you'll notice a problem. The keyboard is going to pop up and obscure the box that we're typing into. That's no bueno. This is a common scenario though, and there are some great tools that address it. We're going to use an extremely simple package called React Native Keyboard Spacer to automatically adjust our screen's position whenever a keyboard pops up. How do we use it? So install it. And with it installed, how do we use it? Well, it's pretty dead simple. We just import it on the screen that we need it at. and then add a keyboard spacer component at the very bottom of the containing view where you want it pushed up if a keyboard shows up. Now this particular keyboard issue is always there on iOS, but not often needed on Android. So we can make this tiny part platform dependent if we like, and only include the spacer if we're on iOS. Now in the real world scenario, you'll definitely want to test this on the Android devices you plan to support, but this general rule applies. For now we can import our platform API and then conditionally we'll ask for a spacer if we need it. And then output spacer depending on what platform we're on. Now that we can visually see our screen, it's easier to think about what we'll need to add to our state or how we'll need to change its shape. The most obvious thing is our list of messages that's being displayed. We'll make that an array of message objects that we can iterate through, much like the fake messages that we already put into the component. Less obvious is any message that our customer starts composing. It doesn't make much sense to add it to our list of real messages yet because it isn't part of the conversation. 
but we still need to track it just like we did with our other name and account number text boxes so that we can control the text component and know the data that we're going to send off to our API. So let's hop into our reducers and add these two new elements to our state. We'll call the message that we're typing in our composing message. Following the same pattern that we've done with name and account number. And we'll call our other element messages. It's an array. Now we have our reducer functions defined. Let's add them to our combined reducers. And now we've added them to our state shape. We can also easily add an action creator that will be called whenever we type into our new message box. In our actions, we'll create a new function. We'll call it update compose message. We'll give it a new unique type and pass along the message. Because we've started to incorporate Redux action creators and reducers into our chat screen, you'll know that we also need to add a higher order component to the mix too as a chat container to glue all these pieces together, huh? So let's follow the same pattern we used on our sign-in container and apply it to chat. And in fact, it's probably easiest just to do a save as on our sign-in container and rework it as needed. So I'm gonna open my sign-in container and do that. Save as, we'll call it chat container. Now we'll change the obvious things, like our sign-in screen is gonna become our chat screen. And instead of name and account number for our state, we'll have our composing message. And instead of these two dispatch methods, we'll have on compose message update, which is going to dispatch out our update compose message. Finally, we'll remove these two actions that we're not using and insert the one that we are, update compose message. As you can see, this follows the exact same patterns we've already established with signing container. And you're gonna see this pattern reflected over and over in the different containers and screens that you're working with. And just like our signing container, we need to replace any instances of our chat screen with chat container. So back in our app.js, we'll pull this chat screen and we'll call it chat container. And we'll pull it from the correct folder as well. Now when we navigate to the chat screen, we're actually going to return that chat container, which is the Redux higher order component that ties us into our chat screen. Now that we're exposing the composing messages prop and the correlated on compose message update handler, we can start using these on our chat screen. Like before, we're going to add the prop types for it. So we'll have a composing message, which is a string, and on compose message update, which is a function. And we'll beef up our text input to accept those. We're also going to add one more property called return key type. And we're going to set it to send. On both iOS and Android, this makes the return key function a little bit differently. It's not just a return, it actually invokes an action and has a different label. The final thing we need to do to make all this work is to go into our reducer and add the switch branch that allows us to actually update our composing message. We'll take our action type from inside of actions and add it as a case. and save. So now we can type out a message, but we can't send it or do anything with it. And that's kind of boring. Let's add the code needed to send the message, which will do three things. One, it's going to add the message to our list of messages. Two, it will clear out our text box so that we can write another message. And three, it will very soon send this message off to our API. Great job getting that screen in place. Now in the next video, we're going to talk about thunks and introduce that concept and also talk about pure reducers and deal with scroll views in a really unique way.